Before we start this video, I just want to say thank you to Pasquia for your support on Patreon. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, my friend, but thank you so much for your contribution. Hello, everybody, and today we're going to add the jump functionality to our game, as was requested by quite a few of you. So, let's go and head over to the input handler. And don't worry, after this we will continue work on our inventory. So first, we're going to want to add an input to actually detect uh, when the jump button is pressed. Now we've done this quite a few times, so let's go over here and right below RT input, I am going to say public bool jump underscore input. Excellent. Okay, now we're going to have to add a functionality to detect when that input is pressed and toggle that bool to true. Let's minimize this so the screen doesn't look confusing and scary. And let's go down here and right under handle interacting button input, I'm going to create a private void called handle jump input or handle jumping input, whichever you prefer. So let's open some curly bracers in here and let's go over to handle interacting this copy and paste this because it will work very much so similar. I'm going to change this A to jump. We have not created this button yet, but I'm going to do that momentarily. I'm going to change this to jump input equals true. And now we're actually going to uh, create the input for jump on our uh, input actions. So first let's call this handle jump input on our tick input. So our uh, game is looking for us to press the jump button. Now let's save that and now let's go add the input action. You're going to get an error here. Don't worry about that. We're going to get rid of that right this second. So let's go to player controls, double click on that and open it up. I'm going to drag it here because it's on my second monitor. And over on player actions, let's duplicate the A action. Let's double click here, uh, drag in under here first. And we're going to change the name to jump, just capital J, UMP, like I had written down in the code. I'm going to delete a couple of these extra buttons here because I do not need them. I'm just going to have the keyboard uh, button spacebar just to test this. If you'd like to add a controller button, you can do that as well. I'm going to type in space and I'm going to tick off mouse and keyboard. I'm going to minimize the jump here now and exit this and save it. So let's clear this error because now it is no longer an error. Now I am going to drag back my curtain here and I'm going to have a jump animation on the ready, which I will drop into my game here. So uh, we're going to be using root motion to control our jumping, meaning the motion of the actual jump itself will be controlled by uh, how the animation behaves. Whoops, I accidentally added two. Full screen this again. Let's go over to our base layer and we're gonna wanna go to the override section, not the base layer, my bad. We're gonna drag in our jump animation here. We're going to make a transition to the empty. Okay, cool. Now then, make sure things in alignment here. Whoops. Next, we are going to head over to the player locomotion. Now we're gonna make the actual functionality to handle our jumping. Uh, so let's minimize the stuff here that we're not using to make the screen less cluttered and make it look more neat. Cool, get that out of the way, get that out of the way. Now right below handle following here, following, sorry, we're going to make a public void called handle jumping. So let's get to it. There we are. Now let's open these curly bracers up. And now this is going to be, uh, behave kind of similarly to uh, our rolling in a way where it's going to take in our player's um, rotation and such. So we're going to say if player manager dot is interacting, we're going to want return. So you don't want to be able to jump when you're doing some other action. Uh, so if you are interacting return, then we're going to say if input handler dot jump input, then we're going to do some logic. So if the jump input has been detected and we are not interacting, let's do some stuff. So we're going to say if input handler dot move amount is greater than zero. So you have to be actually moving forward or in a direction for the jump to actually go off. Don't want to jump stationary. That's not what souls like is. So we're going to say move direction is equal to camera object dot forward. You're going to recognize this if you remember doing the, ro uh, the rolling episode times input handler dot vertical input or just vertical. And then we're going to do the same thing uh, below or similar. Sorry, we're going to say move direction is equal or plus equal to camera object dot right uh, times horizontal input or times horizontal, whatever you named it. Excellent. Next, we are going to say animator handler dot play target animation jump. And we're going to set the is interacting to true. Very straightforward so far. And then we're going to say move direction dot y equals zero. Um, this is just so we let our animation 
uh, the root motion do all the movement for us. We don't want to have any artificial movement on the uh, y-axis. So then we'll say quaternion jump rotation is what I'm going to call this variable. Uh, we're going to just say equal quaternion dot look rotation, and then we're going to pass our move direction. And then we are just going to say my transform dot rotation is equal to jump rotation. So turn the way you are facing when you jump. All right, that looks excellent. Let's minimize that and save it. And let's copy this here now, and we're going to call it in the update function on our player managers. So let's head over there. Um, we're also gonna have to call our jump input equals false on our late update. So we only uh, register that once in a frame. So first let's go here and type in player locomotion and we're gonna say handle jumping. We're just gonna call that on our update. Excellent, wonderful. Let's minimize that here and let's go down to our late update. And we're going to, I'm just gonna insert this right below the A, but we're gonna say input handler dot jump input is equal to false. And when you press the jump button, it can only be called once per frame. All right, let's save that. And now let's go down. Why is this condition on my land? If you have is interacting and false, take that out of there. I think that was an accident. I might've done that off with you. Um, I was playing something. Anyway, create a new bool and we're gonna call this is in air. And now let's go back to our player manager. In a similar fashion, we're gonna say anim.set bool. So we're gonna set the is in air bool to the is in air bool that is in our player manager. So you know, when our fall method detects it from the air, we want to pass it off to our animator and tell our animator, hey, we're in the air right now. And now we're going to do something that's pretty cool. We're going to take our jump animation and we're going to go to the conditions of the transition and we're going to say, if you are in the air, uh, if in the air is false, go back to the empty. So you have to not be in the air for this to go back to the empty. And then we're going to transition to our uh, falling animation and we're going to make the condition if you are in the air just proceed to the falling animation and this will hook us back into our falling system so let's give this a try this should work uh, i'm going to pick up this item because i want to and i'm going to take a running leap here and jump and sure enough as soon as i am in the air i'll make play falling animation and i'll land and you can see when i'm on the ground i should be able to jump as well using remotion. motion and there we go i don't play the falling animation Excellent. So uh, this was really nice, actually. And I love the way I implemented this. Um, the way I did it in this video was a bit different than the way I handled it in my other project. I think actually I prefer this way. Let me know what you guys think. If a couple of you have implemented this differently, let me know how you did it. And as usual, guys, thank you so much for watching. I had a blast making this one. And if you feel like helping me out, please leave a like. It does genuinely help the series get around a lot. I appreciate it. And if you feel super generous, check out my Patreon. Uh, you guys are awesome. I will see you in the next one. I think we're going to go back to working on our inventory system again. Uh, if you guys would like something different other than inventory, we can take a break. Please let me know or give me a DM in the Discord. And to all you lovely people who are trying to reach me in the Discord, please, um, there's a lot of messages on the daily. So just the best way to reach me is to private message me. Uh, beyond that, I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.